and much like Mr. Lee, uh, my both my focus will uh, affect me as I try to do this. So that's why I need to get here so I can see that and see my notes and see and you as you have questions. And so I'll begin. First of all, the presentation will include the review of representative expenditures. They cover a range of six years. About 60% of these are four years old. 25 or 50% of them are in the past two years. They were selected by board members to be representative of the, the total uh, number that you have. They include school level, program, and district expenditures. And they were taken uh, from lists of expenditures provided to various individuals and groups via public information request. And some were from general credit card documents. <coughs> and so I'll begin. And what I will do, and you have that information, uh, but uh, I'll share with you a, a copy, a, a digitized copy of the receipt that we had on file and speak a little bit about it. The first is a bill to Sam's Club. It's for $2,042.88. Why was a purchase made at Sam's Club for $2,042.88 in May 2009? These items were purchased by the Office of School Readiness. These were snacks used in the preschool program. They buy in bulk and store these items for distribution to sites as needed. You'll note from the date, that it was May, these were getting ready for some of the summer programs that we had and then for the fall. You'll see items on there and I've just highlighted a few things like 17 cases of yogurt, which I believe is a kind of yogurt package, uh, 14 uh, cases of goldfish, and 62 of vanilla wafers. It doesn't appear that someone would be using those kind of things for personal use, 62 boxes of vanilla wafers. So they're making a lot of banana puddings. The next is a bill from Walmart. This one uh, was for a little over $600. It was uh, $643. Uh, this was for our food for our summer in-town leadership retreat in 2010 held at the Don Gibson Theater. Some of you will remember when you were school administrators, the school district used to take administrators out of town for a retreat and it might cost 10 or 15, 20 thousand dollars to take all the administrators away for a conference. We no longer do that. We cut that expense and so we have them in town. We'll provide two or three days of, of training and typically with that we'll provide uh, some breaks just as you would at any conference. We'll provide uh, a light breakfast. Usually it's a muffin and a, a glass of juice and then we sometimes will provide lunch and sometimes we'll send those uh, administrators out in the community to patronize our restaurants and help the economy there. And so these were things you'll see just again representative on there, some Cheez-Its and soft drinks, things that we would serve uh, there for snacks. There were approximately 100 people there for three days. Uh, this was provided by our child nutrition staff and you'll see quite a few of these are provided by our child nutrition staff. They do a lot of this kind of work for our school system and for schools. And so these were included and also included some items that were used for breakfast and for lunch. The next is, why were we purchasing items at Dellinger's Jewel Shop? We had bills from three years. We had the bills as well as the credit card receipts. And what were these for? These were retirement gifts for child nutrition employees that had been purchased from Dellinger's Jewel Shop for several years. The expenditure per employee has been consistently around $45. Supporting documentation for these expenditures included the bills, the P card statements that you see in the receipts, along with the names of the employees who were retiring after long years of service, and these were gifts given to them. Another was a bill to Love's Fish Box. Why would we be spending $82.56 at Love's Fish Box? Well, these were bills purchased for a lunch meeting held at the business center in March of 2014, excuse me, 2012. You'll recall a couple of years ago, back at that time, you authorized a group to go out and rebid our cafeteria, 125 cafeteria benefits program. Those are the benefits for our employees. You commissioned a group of uh, teachers and non-certified staff, human resources staff, and school administrators to review proposals, to bid this out, and to come back with you, to you, to you with a recommendation for that. And this is what they did. They worked several days after school, and this was the day when we invited those vendors in, the various companies that provide those services, and asked them to make presentations. The committee worked all day on this, and we provided their lunch so they could stay right there and get all these done in one day. So that was the cost, about $7.51 per person, which included the meal and the drink. Another was a bill to the cup and saucer tea room. This was uh, for meals purchased by our Title II program. Uh, the Child Nutrition, again, facilitated this for us, as they oftentimes do. 
they, this was for a meeting of uh, an audit committee. We had a group here to audit our Title II program, as we do from time to time. We had one here just recently to do that. It hardly seems possible, but we've had another group come in. And um, this was for the luncheon for the audit committee and uh, their, them being here doing the work we provide, provide for them. The next is one that's been talked about a very good bit in our community, and I want to be able to set the record straight on it tonight. This is a bill to grow parking. And there's been a lot that's been said about this. And I want to first begin by showing you the top portion of this bill. This is a bill that was um, given when the, when the employee checked out. It was for overnight lodging paid by the Cleveland County Schools credit card. It was for one night, excuse me, it was for uh, one night was previously credited, and you will see that on the bill here uh, at the top, $140. And then there was a second charge for $170.10 for a total of two nights with uh, $170.10 due for lodging for the second night. Now, what the credit card Folks did, they charged $170.10. This is an actual Cleveland County Schools purchasing card. And you'll see the charge there of $170.10. That was the charge for the second night's lodging and taxes for the first night. When this hotel, particular hotel, charges a reservation room, they charge the first night less taxes. And then when you check out, they charge the second night. So uh, a deposit was made for the first night, and the, the second included the taxes. So, uh, they charged uh, the one night by error, and so the employee reimbursed that to us. How do we know about the reimbursement? Well, first, there's a note here on the bottom of the bill, and this was a digitized document that we took right off of our scanned documents that are in, in the archives, and we saw that there was a note. The, the documentation also included this reimbursement check, which was for the personal night which the hotel charged to the Cleveland County Schools card by mistake. It was paid by the employee back to the school system, reimbursement for this personal night hotel. It was the $140 plus tax for one night, which was a total of $155.10. When considering this reimbursement, CCS only paid for the second night plus the applicable taxes for that night. So now let's go back to the original bill. What happened with all of this other? information at the bottom. All these charges that have been purported to have been paid by the school system. The other items were never charged to Clinton County Schools on any card. They were paid by the employee at the time of the checkout. And you will see here the employee has provided us with a copy of their personal credit card statement that includes those total expenditures. The district never paid those charges at any time. They were never paid on a Cleveland County Schools credit card. They were charged on the date of checkout, and you can see there the date, right there, which was the date of checkout. And that amount accounts for the lower portion of that bill. This was for a Child Nutrition Association conference and seminar that was held there. It was actually a multiple day seminar, and um, our employee only stayed for the beginning of the conference, which was on Sunday afternoon, and then the conference part on Monday when there were sessions that interested, that were a benefit to our school district. So, Cliff County Schools paid for the Sunday night hotel because the meeting was Sunday night and Monday, and the Saturday night charge was reimbursed by the school employee. And you have those documents there to document that. The next one was, uh, why in the world did we make a purchase at uh, the Walmart Supercenter in Rock Hill and why did we buy items at the vitamin shop in Pineville? Now, it says on the bill, Pineville, New York, but it's actually Pineville, North Carolina. And we have the documents to back that up. A proper check request was completed to authorize the payment of this credit card bill, which included these charges. Note, the request was provided, prepared by a staff member who was not the purchaser and reviewed by the appropriate director and the assistant superintendent for instruction. And I, I just want to give you this one as an example. We have these documents on all these, but uh, just to show you, there was approval by the uh, department person. This was from the CTE department, and it was also approved by the assistant superintendent for instruction at the time. We also have a purchase 
law that is a computer credit card law that we use. This was included on there. The items were noted on that law and properly documented. And I'll call your attention to the codes out to the far end of that. Those are budget codes which tell us where the expenditure uh, should come from. And I'll talk a little bit more about those a little bit later. But again, there was an employee signature, and I, I like out the employee signatures on these because these are not things that employees should be ridiculed over. These are people doing these things in the, the, the scope of their employment and their job. Uh, it was also approved by the departmental person, CTE director, and again, the expenditure law was approved by the assistant superintendent. So what were these for? The credit card receipts were provided, and the amounts matched the procurement law and the document requesting the check. Items were food and nutrition class items. The Walmart note, uh, note indicated it was for items for the food labs during that entire month. You can see at the top there it says, uh, or I believe the month of February, all foods February labs. And then the vitamin shop charges for a food science activity. I apologize. And also provided was a copy of the lesson plan to describe what was going to be done with, in the classroom by the teacher with the vitamin C tablets that were purchased at the vitamin shop. So a legitimate purchase, uh, items that were going to be used in the classroom. You can see on the, the uh, lesson plan, it includes vitamin C tablets approach. The items were purchased in Pineville and in Rock Hill because that was close to where the teacher lives. Uh, note, if you look at the back of the receipts, you'll see that they were purchased on a Saturday, which is personal time, which I would fuss at the teacher for spending their personal time away from family and doing this work on the weekend, but I know, having uh, been a teacher and been around teachers for 34 years, that's what's happening every day. Our teachers are doing this kind of work nights and weekends and providing what they need to for their students. So this was information, This was uh, I, these were items that were provided for a school experiment, so to speak, and for foods and nutrition class. We had a $61.47 charge to Bath and Body Works. What was that for? This was for hand soap and hand sanitizers, which were purchased and provided to school cafeteria managers at their back to school training on August 17th through 23rd, 2010. These were items for use in school cafeterias. Uh, our school cafeteria ladies washed their hands a lot. And so these were items that would hopefully help that a little, be a little bit more special than we had an item at Philan's Florist for $54.34. Why were we purchasing items at Philan's Florist? These were for flowers purchased by the Child Nutrition Department for the funeral of a child of a school cafeteria employed in August of 2012. Uh, when we talked about these items some time ago, and I'll, again, I'll refer to that later, but you made it clear to us that you thought there were appropriate times when we needed to do this kind of thing uh, in our organization to support those who are our employees. Why did an employee uh, spend money at the uh, Hampton Inn, I believe it is, in Morganton, $84.16. A finance department employee attended a finance academy class held in Morganton on May 34th, 2010. These finance academy classes are required from support some of our people, and this one was held in Morganton, where most of the re Western region courses are held. It's a multiple day course, and some of them are, depending on the training topic, and a receipt for the hotel was provided uh, when they returned. We had a uh, bill to Victoria Stevens here up in Uptown Shelby. This was, <coughs> excuse me, a uh, bill in, from 2007. This was for, in lieu of an Acacia honorarium, we had uh, several small gifts were purchased to thank some out of town trainers who presented at the cafeteria manager's back to school training in August of 2007. There were seven presenters. We had the documents of the names of those presenters, and the gifts were purchased uh, as, a, as a thank you at Victoria Stevens to provide to these presenters who came to our district to help us out. Box for twenty dollars apiece. Here's one that does uh, make me stop and pause a little bit. There's been a good bit of talk about this one. Uh, what, uh, why did we purchase M&Ms with our new system logo on? They were purchased by Child Nutrition in bulk. Again, they were preparing for our in-town administrative retreat when we had first adopted our new strategic plan and our new logo. It was at the Don Gibson in 2010. 
and these uh, were later used in several other events where refreshments were being served. Um, this is probably one that in hindsight we may not have done again, but uh, I can assure you nobody took these home and had an m, &M Fest. These were used for school events and school activities. The next one is a question about why would we make a purchase at HRC in New York, New York City, what, and what is HRC for $820? What is HRC? Well, in February of 2009, Shelby High School made a purchase from HRC in New York City. An additional purchase was made at the same location on February 9th, with a refund coming back to the system on February the 16th. You'll see from this document, which was included, that this purchase was for 88 meals during the Shelby High School orchestra trip to Carnegie Hall. When students arrived to eat, there was a mix-up about whether the deposit for the school uh, had been received. The bill was paid at that, that, that time so the students could eat, so they didn't go hungry there in New York City. And the system presented the original deposit of the bill back to the company, and we were credited for the amount. That amount was documented. We have a check uh, that says on their reimbursement. Back in documentation uh, back up, you'll see a purchase order that uh, accounts for the deposit. You'll see over there on the far left, it says deposit. So this was documentation that when, when the mix-up was cleared up, students had returned and everything was corrected. We got, a, actually Shelby High School got a check back from HRC of New York and turned around and wrote a check back to the system to deposit it back in the, the correct account for this meeting. Uh, this was the first time, I believe, that our orchestra went to uh, New York City, to Carnegie Hall, and I would be remiss if I didn't remind you that they've been twice at Shelby High School. So, what is HRC? Hard Rock Cafe. Or, I'm sorry, I thought I said the Hard Rock Cafe. And, by the way, there was a proper purchase law that was completed to document the purchase made during the orchestra trip. You'll see here that that law kind of highlighted a portion of that that also includes that detailed budget code out there to the right that includes uh, where all these things go. Sandy's Country Christmas Crafts and Variety. Why did we spend $17.59 at Sandy's Country Christmas? These were items that were purchased on November 3rd, 2011, $17.59. The receipt had a notation that they were for tablecloths, but upon review of the other documents, it was clear that the items were for tablecloths for the ninth grade student career event at Crest High School. So they were purchased by the school. They were also included, again, on a procurement law. And again, you'll notice that all of these logs have, have multiple, excuse me, have multiple signatures on them. They may have the purchaser, they may have the uh, account manager, and they would have the principal, and then perhaps a director at the central office if they were purchased from one of our program funds. So the document log was included. Uh, we had a, other documents that supported that. The backup, you'll see at the top of this one, it says ninth grade career fair in a TEF meeting. And then uh, we have a copy of the credit card bill where the Sandy's uh, Country Christmas was notated for $17.59. Again, you'll see on the lower left the person who manages that in our CTE department had reviewed it, then the director of CTE reviewed it, and then the assistant superintendent had reviewed it as well. Tweetsie Railroad, why did we spend $1,387 at Tweetsie Railroad? What was the purpose? Did we send teachers to Tweetsie Railroad for $1,387? Well, the backup documentation is a, a bill, and you'll see on this bill there are some tickets that were purchased. And then there was a cash transaction of $610 for a total of $19.97. So our question is about the $13.97. That included a copy of the receipt, and it indicated that we had a group of 56 children, 15 adults, and six free tickets that were complimentary. It also indicated we purchased lunches and drinks. The total on the P card was for $13.87, which accounted for the ticket portion of the transaction. <coughs> Excuse me. The additional documentation that was provided Included the purchase order of the credit card bill, which listed this trip along with about five others to the Charlotte Knights, to several other places. I can't read that far. Kate Skating Ring, uh, Shield Museum, etc. Uh, taken by our Kids Around Summer Care Program. It also included documentation 
uh, where uh, the additional credit cards receipts were included on all of the other trips. Why did we spend $196 at the Appalachia River Raft Company? Well, that charge was made on June 22, 2011. When we reviewed that, documentation included the proper forms and the approvals to indicate that this was an expenditure for the Phoenix program at Turning Point Academy, just through the doors over here. Actually, they weren't there at the time. They were out on the South Post Road. You'll see that it has the proper signatures at the bottom. Why did we do this? A further review revealed that this expenditure was part of an outward bound activity, a wilderness activity for our Phoenix students as part of the Rites of Passage program. It is part of the Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention Agreement grant. And you can see there in red, it's circled activity fees for the Rite of Passage. This was what uh, was done. We had some of our folks, I'm not sure if Mr. Borders went, but others went. I would like to see Mr. Borders in the, in the raft. Um, but at any rate, they went and chaperoned these students on this trip. Uh, we had one uh, that was made, why was the expenditure made in, in September 2009 to Hammerick's of Gaffney for $179? And this happens from time to time as this uh, was. The documenta documentation shows that this purchase was made in error. You can't really read it, but up there it says personal purchase in error. And it was made by an employee. And when it was discovered by the employee at the time the employee received their monthly P card statement, they wrote this note back and said, I mistakenly used the school card instead of my personal card at Hammerick's of Gaffney. I've written a personal check to the school system for the purchase. And the employee self-reported that, and they received, at the time they received the statement, and they corrected the mistake. That happens occasionally. It doesn't happen often, but it happens occasionally. And when that uh, employee see, receives their, if they don't discover it beforehand, when they receive their monthly bill, and as they're managing their account, and start reconciling that, they'll understand that, and they will correct that. Again, as I told you earlier, uh, those Documents are reviewed multiple times by the account manager, by the supervisor, and others, and people in the finance department. And so we catch those and we ask them to, to correct those. If certainly that becomes a problem, we deal with that in a different fashion. But uh, this one was correct. Question, why did an employee reimburse the district for $1,697 made on May 3rd, 2010? Was this for a single purchase or multiple purchases? This one took me a little bit of, of time to track all this down. But, what we had was uh, the amount was for reimbursement to child nutrition by the Office of School Readiness, $1,384 on there, uh, for the foster grandparent lunches. The foster grandparents program helps us do some lunches for our uh, grandparents who come for the preschool program. <coughs> and this transaction was made by school district check as required from the uh, Office of School Readiness to child nutrition. So Child Nutrition began the process of depositing that. They had the uh, purchase order that accounted for that. And so there was the $1,384.44. It also, the documentation also included the number of meals that grandparents had at each school. So then there was additional uh, reimbursement charges on there, $48.65 was for an additional program meal reimbursement to to, by the district to the child nutrition program for some lunches and you'll see there the check was deposited for that and went through the process. Also included on this uh, deposit were items such as ice cream sandwiches used by a school for a Title I event. Uh, these were items that the child nutrition department provided to the school for their, for their Title I celebration and because our child nutrition is an enterprise fund they make they uh, are a self-supporting organization, then, then we have to reimburse if something is used. They can't take those federal dollars and other dollars, those revenue dollars, to buy this kind of items. And so the school purchased it. We had a, a appropriate purchase order issued by the school that included the uh, ice cream sandwiches for Title I. It says up there in the description. And then we had the bill sent by Child Nutrition to the school for the purchase of those ice cream sandwiches. That accounts for the two thirty-nine seventy. So that accounts for everything on this bill except the top amount, the six dollars and twenty-seven cents in cash. And so the reimbursement actually was not for the total, whatever it was, sixteen hundred and seventy-nine dollars. The reimbursement was actually for six dollars and twenty-seven cents. This was a case where an employee.
the Child Nutrition Department was going through uh, to pick up some items at the grocery store. And, and, and let me pause there and say, sometimes we do buy items at local grocery stores. We have some children who have special dietary needs, and sometimes we'll go and pick up those things. Sometimes we'll have a, a power go off, and we may go get enough sun butter and jelly and bread to make sandwiches so we can feed children. Sometimes when the power goes off, we may go to a pizza restaurant and get 150 pizzas so that we can feed children uh, if they're still at school and we're not dismissed because of the power shortage. But in this case, this employee was going through the line to pick up some specialized items, and uh, the items got intermingled, and before they could tell the cashier about it, they were charged. And so the employee came straight back, notated that on the bill. You can, it's hard to see, but there's a notation there for $6.27, and you'll notice here at the top, that was the currency and coin that was reimbursed. So the, the only amount that was really reimbursed by an employee was $6.27. The, S, the rest was program, interior, program to program uh, reimbursements back and forth. A couple more. On June the 4th, 2008, we had a $416 charge to Shelby Nursery. This was to purchase uh, flowers and furniture and decorate tables for the end of the year child nutrition banquet, where awards were presented to staff and retirees are recognized. And we typically, as we do some of those events, you've been to some, we will give the table decorations to the attendees as, as a door prize. Here's one that uh, requires a little more work, uh, and I'll tell you that on April 30th, 2008, a $480.38 purchase was made at Victoria Stevens by a former employee. The documentation was incomplete on this one, and so I'm continuing to work on this. While the date indicates that these were also items for a banquet, we're still researching that expenditure, and we've contacted the former employee, and we'll provide an update when I get that additional information. Again, I think based on the dates and the documentation that we do have, it is for a bank. So there's some frequent questions that are asked that are not part of these receipts that I want to share with you just quickly and then I'll uh, begin to close. For example, why are there charges to the Cleveland Country Club? Why do we have those in our, among our bills? And some of you have asked that. Well, the Cleveland Country Club was used for a number of years for recognition events such as the Teacher of the Year Banquet, the Teacher of the Year Breakfast, uh, the Child Nutrition Year End Banquet, the Community Health Advisory Council meetings, individual school events and other catering of events prior to the opening of the Red Center and this facility. Now that we have this place, we're able to host most of those events here. Certainly when we can, for something like the Senior Scholars Banquet they're going to have in a couple of weeks, we'll go to the Grand Center. But uh, the district uh, use, has used these other venues. Uh, we do not have as a district a membership to the Cleveland Country Club. I do not have a membership to the Cleveland Country so I have never charged anything there because I don't have a membership, contrary to what has been said. Uh, we have charged some things as a system. I know some of you have been to the Teacher of the Year Banquet and the School Health Advisory and some of these other banquets that we've had there in the past. We haven't had many lately because we've got other venues now. But these recognition events for staff and students, as well as meetings and training sessions, were held at a lot of other venues for a period of time. We've been to Aldersgate, and to Zor, and to Poplar Springs, and to Jackson's Cafeteria, and all these other places during the time when those events were catered or by local businesses or by child nutrition at one of those events. And so we've done that in the past. Uh, rec recognition events are usually for district-wide groups such as transportation, child nutrition, or educational foundation. Occasionally a school will go there. But again, we have to use an employee's membership to be able to use those facilities. Typically, when we go use those facilities, we pay the cost of the meal, and we don't pay the rent the hall because we're providing the, the meals being provided for our people. And so, uh, it, it, at times, we could go to those places, and it was one of the cheapest places we could go because we didn't have to rent additional facility or cater the meals in uh, in large quantity. So why do we, this is another question that gets asked a lot, and I'm going to address this tonight. Why do we advertise through various media, media, including billboards? Well, in case you haven't noticed, there's a thing called school choice out there right now, and we have competition. We've done limited advertisement because the competition still exists. Um, some of our competition rents the billboard over Chick-fil-A. I've seen it there. Some have billboards out here uh, along Highway 74. And so we've done a little bit of that. Uh, that came again as a result of uh, some recommendations out of uh, our strategic plan a number of years ago that we needed to do some of that. 
Most of the cost of that media program has been for photography. You know we reduced our public information staff a number of years ago, and that has been offset by contracting with an employee uh, that's been shared to photograph school events. Our parents and community have indicated they like the news and like the, the uh, picture walls that we've had out there on the website that highlight the, the activities that our children and our students are doing. We've tried the use of billboards in some limited fashion, um, and this has been kind of, I think, also kind of blown out, out of proportion. We've purchased two, two, uh, two, two or three times um, about two billboards at a time. And out of the goodness of their business, uh, the billboard company has at times given us as many as six additional free billboards. And so they've been a good school partner. And as we've done that, we've advertised and, and tried to highlight what's going on and the good that's going on in our system. Some of those were better than others. We've made presentations to you as a board about these activities at the time they were happening, so you were well informed of those. Uh, these programs were discontinued a little over a year ago as we began to see budgets cut and as we looked for other places to make some adjustments, we did cut these. Why are large credit card payments made to some businesses locally and elsewhere? Well, American Express has a rebate program which identifies other entities with which we conduct business that are also American Express customers. Our payments through American Express are eligible for a rebate. And it gets better. We're able to bundle payments to a, to a group of higher volume vendors who are identified by American Express to get a higher rebate rate. And so we have places like Rutherford Electric or Apple that are large uh, vendors or large suppliers for us. And when they're on the list, we can write a check as we would normally do with the process. And, and Mr. Lee may have to speak to this process if you have more technical questions, but those checks are voided and a payment is made via a separate card that has just been designated by American Express to pay those charges. And so we pay that credit card off at the end of the month, but a, a large payment is made bundling these multiple, multiple purchases by departments and thereby we increase our rebate. And so when you look at some of our documents and you see that we made a $60,000 purchase to our payment by credit card to Apple Computer in California, we're making that payment to the home office for items that have been purchased at multiple schools and maybe the central office and have been bundled together and we get a bulk payment, but we also get a big rebate on that. And so Mr. Lee's a master at making our money stretch and this is one of those things that one of the reasons we were uh, impressed and, and changed to American Express as a vendor because we knew we would get this rebate. How do we track and follow expenditures? This is a question we get. Well, we have a large staff involved. I've already alluded to some of that. We have multiple approvals and sign-offs at schools with final review in the business department. Again, as I said earlier, every purchase that is made will go through at least three people reviewing it now. Uh, there's a detailed state mandated, track, uh, mandated tracking and coding system that tells the source of funds, the purpose, the cost center. It's that long number that's on all, all of our documents. It tells us whether it's state money, local money, federal money, and where that should be char charged to. If that expenditure is charged to a school or the child nutrition program or the transportation department, our people can look at that code and understand the department. So oftentimes when we may see something that looks unusual, we can look at it and look at that code and immediately we know when we see what the department is, why it's been purchased. We, are, uh, we have audits that are conducted annually to validate the process and the procedures used. Those are your uh, outside auditors that come in and validate that process and make sure that we're following procedures. And then we have random scheduled and, uh, audits and exit audits that are conducted by the finance department, by Mr. Lee, and by Mr. Alexander, our internal auditor. And so these items um, kind of detail a little bit about how we go about uh, reviewing these expenditures. Uh, as I said earlier, some of our expenditures may be reviewed as many as five times. If an expenditure doesn't look right, it will be sent back for more documentation. Oftentimes an expenditure will, if it's not timely, will be brought to me for my approval because it's exceeded a, a specific period of time. And so we do have a very uh, vigorous process to look at these things. 
So now let me conclude with a few points. I know you're glad I'm going to finish. First, I want to remind you that most of these purchases, about two-thirds, were from more than four years ago. About a quarter were made in the last three years. I also want to point out that we've taken steps in the past few years to address many issues of concern. Some of these have been to significantly reduce the number of P-cards and return to purchase orders exclusively in some of the departments where we had some problems. We've instituted a process where principals annually submit a list of all items they would like to purchase from for their staff, such as meals and recognition items, and they get approval for those at the beginning of the year prior to any purchase. With the opening of central services, we now have adequate staff development space and we seldom have a rent outside facilities, except for large events, such as the Senior Scholars Banquet and the Closing the Gap Summit. We've reviewed our purchasing policies and we brought those to you for discussion and revisions some a while back, and we've implemented those. We've had training by your board attorneys on proper purchasing practices. We've employed a full-time auditor to give us a systematic and regular review <coughs> of school and department purchases. And he conducts regular school and program audits and gives improvement feedback to the fund managers. We conduct regular exit audits when the chief administrator leaves a campus or a program. We have cooperated fully with the State Auditor and the SBI on multiple audits, reviews, and investigations. We've eliminated the large number of vehicle, vehicles that employees drove home so that we could eliminate the need for some of these expenditures. And we regularly discuss purchasing issues in administrative meetings and remind our personnel of our expectations. I do hope this board, as you continue to review and evaluate this issue, will support our administrators and doing the kinds of things they need to do to recruit and retain teachers, express appreciation to our staff, and most importantly, reward and motivate our students. I hope you recognize that these efforts may include small expressions of appreciation when students do well. It may include a meal or ice cream or some other reward as part of our positive behavior intervention and support program to reinforce good behavior in our students. It may include other things that help our system successful. You see, I believe some of this is a part of our success story. We have the highest graduation rate in our history, moving from over 350 dropouts six years ago to just 133 last year. While that's still too many, it's a great trend that's moving in rapidly in the right direction. We have low teacher turnover rates and very positive results on our teacher working condition surveys administered by the state. We have schools being recognized as national AP honor roll schools. We have schools in the U.S. News and World Report top rankings for high schools in the nation. We have national blue ribbon schools. And by the way, we have another nominee this year, one of only about six or seven in North Carolina, which will be our third in the last six years. That's a national recognition. And so we're waiting to hear whether that school receives that recognition. We've dramatically lowered our long and short-term suspension rates through programs like PDS. And we're seeing higher academic results as we encourage and reward our students. And the list goes on, and I could continue, but I won't. When these things happen, we need to recognize our staff and our students and provide meaningful instructional experiences. These experience expenditures and thousands of others support that work, oftentimes through rewards, recognition, and, success, and, and special programs that make our district more, suspect, uh, more successful. I hope this explanation has been helpful. While I know it has not answered every question about every bill, I hope it illustrates uh, by the review of the items that your board members selected that we are looking at these things, we're reviewing these things, and there are logical explanations for some of these purchases that people have criticized. Again, they may not be purchases that everybody agrees with, but they have been to support the mission and the work of our school district. So Mr. Chair, at this time, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, Bruce. Appreciate the time you've taken for this. Now it's time for the board to 